All right, well, I'm just going to jump into this video again, similar to our last video that I had posted about a week ago. Uh, today is actually Valentine's Day uh, 2023, and I'm going to do a little bit of an update on things of concerning my health and uh, how things have been going for me since I've been out of the hospital. And look, this video, I'm going to tell you some things here at the beginning. This video is mainly for uh, my friends, uh, my business colleagues, and the people that are my customers, as well as like family and close friends. That way, um, you know, I want there to be kind of a record of, of what's been going on with me and what's been happening. And uh, I'm sorry, the dog is in the background uh, messing with something. So he might come in here and join us. But um, anyway, I am doing these videos to kind of just document what had happened specifically to me. This doesn't like concern really any grand scheme of things or anything else that might be happening. Uh, so my actions in these videos is to just discuss what has been going on with my event, with my myocarditis. And, you know, normally this channel is dedicated to tech. I just think that right now I want to keep everybody in the loop of things with me as I'm trying to get better. So, um, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Now, the other thing is, uh, I did wind up turning on monetization, on the last video and then I'll have monetization on on this video and the reason being for that is just because that money will go and help me um, with costs on anything that comes up look I do have insurance but in the United States of America um, insurance is usually accompanied by things called co-insurance co-pays um, deductibles and so I don't want anything you know like, and I don't need any kind of like charity money or anything, but please do know that the, that's the reason the video is monetized and that little bit does will help uh, for anything that comes up. Because uh, today I had to go in finally for my first checkup since leaving the hospital and I left the hospital last Sunday. Since then, I've been home recuperating, trying to uh, get my energy levels back. Um, I've just been kind of dealing with a lot of fatigue. That's kind of understandable and what I would expect um, from what happened. But I have been dealing with that and I've been trying to get my energy level back up. And uh, so anyway, today, today was my first experience with an MRI. Um, I had to go get an MRI done of my heart and it's a follow up. It was the first follow up thing that I've had since being out of the hospital. And then um, so I thought I would give you kind of a experience on how that MRI was because I honestly had no idea how it was going to go what what really was the ex, you know what was to expect from it so I thought if you want to know I'll give you some details on how my MRI went but um, first I just got up this morning uh, took my kids into school dropped them off and then went straight to the uh, clinic out by the hospital and it, it's actually a part of the hospital that's why I have a our hospital band still on. And so um, I got checked in there. I got into a waiting room with a technician that was a nurse, and he kind of explained to me what the MRI was and how it was going to go. And so, um, you know, when you start getting told what it is, I think that's the moment where you might start to have fear build up. That's when I started to feel a little nervous was when he was explaining the process because getting a heart MRI, uh, what I had to do was I had to go in a tube that um, if you have any kind of fear of small places, it could be an issue. It's it's a pretty much a solid uh, tube that they slide you in. I think they said it was like four feet around. I mean, there was not much space between my head and the top of this tube. I could lean back and look up and see outside of it. I mean, but it was still probably a foot longer than my head. And so anyway, to get to get in there, you have to get undressed, take off any jewelry, make sure you have no metal on you. Um, unfortunately, COVID protocols are still in place at the hospital. So you do have to wear a mask the whole time. So you have to wear a mask. Um, you know, I don't care whether you want to wear a mask. I'm just saying that you have to wear a mask. So I had to wear a mask the whole time inside the tube. And then um, I was wearing just some scrub pants 
uh, my underwear, and then a gown shirt. And of course, I had to have the open gown shirt on the front because they had a bunch of sticky tabs on my chest where they were monitoring monitoring things. Um, I did have a pillow behind my head, and then I did have an IV hooked up because they were going to administer um, something later on in the test. So anyway, I, at first I was hearing about this test. I had no idea I was going to have to get an IV again, but I was like, okay, it makes sense. And IV was again to send in um, a contrast chemical or medicine that is supposed to make a contrast view of your heart for the imaging uh, that goes on in the MRI. So anyway, the IV, you know, you get your your plug put in for your IV by the nurse. If you get into your gowns, go put all your stuff. I had to go put, put all my things in the locker. And then I went back and I drank a glass of water. And then I was just taken right into the MRI machine, again, where it's this tube. And I was explained to, you know, they did put some nodes on my chest again to monitor my heart. They, uh, in my vital signs, they connected the contrast medicine to my IV. They gave me a little ball to hold in my left hand. And then it had a wire coming out of it. And uh, that was in case I had any kind of like fear or I needed a break, I could squeeze that and they would take me out because the process takes an hour once you're in the tube. And once you're in the tube, um, not only do they have all that stuff hooked up, but there's something they put on your chest or my chest. They put a thing on my chest that looked almost like a piece of body armor, really. It was just like a flak jacket or something uh, with some holes in it. And so that was on the chest. They gave me some headphones and they just had it on classic rock. They asked me what I wanted to listen to, but I was so, so like distraught. I couldn't think of anything. So I just went with the classic rock. And I, the only thing I could think about was, all right, I'm going to count how many songs. And once I get to like 20 songs, it'll have been an hour, maybe like, you know, about 20 classic rock songs. So anyway, you have to get in this tube. They, they just, the machine sucks you in there. It's making all kinds of weird sounds. And, uh, then you go into these breathing, I don't know what it's called, exercises, patterns, so they can do your imaging. So the whole time you're laying there, and I just try to close my eyes and go away to that like special place in my mind uh, that just like lets me escape all this stuff while I'm in it. But at the same time, there's an automated voice going off that's telling you breathing uh, instructions. So it's like, take a uh, deep breath in. Now take a deep breath out and hold your breath. And then you have to hold your breath and then the machine starts going crazy. And all I can say is it sounds like you're being, and it feels like you're being uh, in like a Xerox machine <laughs> and you're like a tiny person inside a Xerox, Xerox machine and the thing's going past you over and over again for anywhere from like five to probably the longest would have been like 10 to 15 seconds on how long I had to hold my breath and that was just so that the images could get a good picture of my chest and my heart and get through everything. And like my understanding was so my lungs wouldn't be expanded and full of air. It's harder to take a picture through your lungs to get to the heart. So that's why the breathing instructions were important. But the whole time you're in this tube and again, you can't you can't move at all. Like that's the whole thing they tell you too, is you have to stay still to make these images come out good. Um, so you don't need to move at all. So all you're doing is laying there and um, listening to these commands and listening to the songs in the background on these headphones they've put on to try to make the Xerox machine that's going off <laughs> not sound so loud. So uh, that, that continued for no joke, probably 40 minutes of just that, the commands. And then you take a break in between the commands for like 20 seconds and then they do another command and it would just keep going and going and going. And then they would administer the, um, the medicine, the contrast medicine uh, through with the IV. And then they take another round of pictures after that, after it's gotten through your heart. And uh, I mean, that's always a weird feeling to me because I can always feel when these IVs happen and you can feel the medicine or whatever's really being put in there. You, once it starts going in, you can kind of feel it, you know, it's coming in your bloodstream and it's just, I don't know, to me, it's always an eerie feeling. 
But um, that was administered. I had to sit there for another 20 minutes and do more images. And um, at this, the whole time, too, you're, you're not wearing a lot of clothes. I was only allowed to wear my socks and my scrubs that they had given me. And, and I had to remain still. And then there's air, cold air blowing over you due to the heat from the machine and to kind of give you oxygen so you don't feel like you're um, you know, claustrophobic, it's blowing cool air. So my hands and my feet especially started getting really cold, especially when I couldn't move them for an hour. Uh, so if you do have to do an MRI, uh, I would recommend wearing like two or three pairs of cotton socks, uh, <laughs> just to keep your feet warm. That's about the only thing I could say that was, um, uh, the hardest part when I had to stay still after a while and my feet really started to feel cold and, and get numb. Uh, but that's the whole experience. So I got out of there. They cleaned me up, uh, you know, got me back in my street clothes. And they told me that I needed to go home. It was going to be thousands of images they were compiling for this MRI. And then I have a follow-up appointment in about nine days with a specialist to talk about what actually you know is a result from that MRI and anything else and if there's anything else that's going to happen uh, I will know at that appointment so that's kind of what has happened since then um, I will tell you that I was feeling really great up to this point but I can tell that the MRI and everything that was done in that process did make me tired again so um, I feel like it was a good thing but it was maybe a little bit of a setback to my energy um, I'm going to, you know, continue to work on building the energy this week and just rest some more, um, so that I can try to get back to a hundred percent. I mean, I will admit that I'm a little bit nervous about, uh, doing a lot to stress my heart out. And I think, I think about it a lot now because I mean, why wouldn't I after having this thing happen? Uh, but I haven't experienced any pain or anything since then. So everything seems to be good as far as good can be. And again, look, I mean, I don't know what you expect from me in these videos. If you're expecting something else and you're not um, somebody that I personally know or something or, you know, a normal audience member that's here, that's just concerned with my health. Um, I, uh, I, I just, I'm going to have to keep going on and I really do want these to be here in case something does happen to me. I mean, I don't know. You know, none of us are guaranteed any time here on this earth. And so, I mean, my advice is to be ready because you just never know what's going to happen. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Uh, but as for now, I'm going to continue to update you and things like this. Um, I will be filming an episode of the Cathode Ray podcast with Lewis tomorrow. If you want more information on that, you can, of course, go check out Zez Retro and all the things that we do over there and that Lewis does. Um, so I'll have a discussion with him, kind of go through a little bit more deeper on things and just uh, leave it at that. And hopefully soon we'll be able to get back to some actual CRT stuff, some, you know, normal things around here, uh, because I do still have some great, great plans set up here. Uh, but anyway, that's the update. I really appreciate your support and all the kind words. And I'll just say, have a wonderful day.